Security. I have not taken a penny from any foreign source ever in my life. We learned that this president paid 50 times the tax in China, has a secret bank account with China, does business in China, and in fact is talking about me taking money. I have not taken a single penny from any country whatsoever, ever. Number we are told today that our nation is hopelessly divided. But I found something different as I travel this country. There are a lot of quiet Americans who are looking with disgust at the vitriol, the name calling, and the venom. They want it to end. They want us to get along. Most of us agree, for example, that we should take care of our veterans. Most of us agree that we should seek peace abroad instead of war. We all agree teachers should receive decent salaries and respect. We all agree that housing should be affordable and that corporations should pay their fair share. We all agree that we want a clean environment, that we want wholesome communities for our children. Americans are weary, they're tired of the culture war, the phony slogans, the politicians who use the partisan blame game to divide us against each other and keep us all at each other's throats. And people suspect that the divisions are deliberately orchestrated and that getting us to hate each other is all part of the scam. They're fed up with being fooled. They're ready to take back power. If you like this video and you want to learn more about me and the movement that we're building, please go to Kennedy 24. A new generation of Kennedy taking the stage in the presidential election. Those of us who are in search of truth know he's the guy. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., son of the late Senator Robert Kennedy and the nephew of former President John F. Kennedy, is following in their footsteps on the campaign trail. He spoke to a packed crowd in Annapolis Monday night. The Kennedys are famous Democrats, but he's running as an independent. Many of our political leaders are great people. But they're locked in this tribal, you know, grapple that does not allow them to think outside the box, that does not allow them to find solutions that are actually good for America. They have to do what the party tells them to do. I think that it's benefited him. His poll numbers have gone up. And I think people are starting to realize that an independent is what it takes to, to take this country back. Kennedy told the crowd his platform includes priorities from both parties. He spoke for nearly an hour about environmental issues, inflation and health care. He will um, be an advocate for uh, health choice and health freedom, which is one of my concerns. Um, he will be an advocate uh, for uh, negotiating peaceful in peace internationally. One of the biggest cheers came when he talked about the war in Ukraine. He is not in favor of our government getting involved financially. The real the White House admits the big bills are going to come after the war. When we then have to, we're going to giving these huge contracts out to rebuild Ukraine. And we're going to pay for that. We're going to pay for rebuilding Ukraine when we're not. We need to rebuild this country. He admits the biggest hurdle now is getting his name on the ballot in all 50 states. This is very doable, but I can't do it alone. I need your help. His campaign continues later this week in New England. Reporting live in Annapolis, Kim Day, CWBAL TV 11 News. Hey everybody, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. here. I'm reaching out to you about an important matter called ballot access. Because I'm running as an independent candidate, we have to tackle the massive challenge of getting on the ballot in all 50 states. That means collecting millions of signatures, which is gonna end up costing us about $15 million. That's a cost that the two-party candidates don't have to bear they're automatically on the ballot. I'm actually thrilled to meet this challenge because it allows us to showcase our people power in action. Last quarter, thanks to your extraordinary support, we outraised both Presidents Trump and Biden in individual campaign contributions. And if you've been reading the newspapers, you know that my favorability ratings are much higher than either of these candidates. I already have enough national support to qualify to be on this stage for the presidential debates. 
which means voters will finally have another choice outside of the corporate-controlled unit party. Americans want more options, and with your help, we can make that happen. Your donations right now are going to go directly to our ballot access mission. Whether it's $5 or $20 or $100, every dollar you give gets us one step closer to taking back the White House. When I do that, everything is going to change. If you like this video and you want to help me become president of the United States, go to Kennedy24.com and donate now. Let's do it. Let's bring in Colby Hall, Dr. Lauren Wright, and Steve Krakauer. Okay, welcome one and all, everybody. Topic one, ladies and gentlemen, RFK Jr. He raised $8.7 million in the third quarter. You do the math here. That's more than Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, Chris Christie, and former Vice President Mike Pence all combined. 30% of all donations came from, from California. Steve, let me just kick things off from you, and then we can just free flow from there. Where's all this money coming from? I was also surprised to see that a big chunk of them were from, you know, people who work in the healthcare industry, which is surprising given his anti-vaxxing, you know, record. Uh, where's this money coming from? Yeah, I, I think the attacks on pharma have really put him on the map. And, and you look at the latest poll, Quinnipiac, in a three-person race, has him winning independents, people who are who identify as independents over Biden and Trump, has him winning in people 18 to 34. He is a real constituency right now. Now, the problem for him is going to be getting on the ballots in certain states. It's going to be very challenging for him to do that. But from the money that he's raising, from the way he's polling, he is going to be a constant story for, for at least the next six months, if not the next year, if he can start to get on some of these ballots. Mm -hmm. Colby, what is your think, thought about this? Because clearly he's not on the ballots yet. I think he's doing well in the polls because he's sort of the none of the above candidate. And a none of the above candidate is really appealing right now, with given the other leaders. Um, you know, I, I think he was always sort of designed to be a spoiler candidate, but it's not clear whose candidacy he's going to spoil. Um, you know, you saw him mostly on conservative media as, an, uh, as a sort of an option to, uh, to Biden. But recent polls show that he could hurt Trump's campaign more uh, or as much uh, as Biden. So, you know, I, I, it'll be interesting to see who he ends up endorsing at the end or if that even matters. But, you know, 22 percent, that's more than Ross Perot got at 19 percent in, in 92. So he's no joke. RFK Mentum is real. Yeah. RFK Mentum versus RFK. Momentum. <laughs> I don't know. Lauren, Lauren's, don't saying, know. Lauren's saying let's take a breather. Let's take a breather because, <laughs> look, we have a, a single ballot, majoritarian system, independent candidates do not, cannot, will not win. I think his candidacy is interesting. I'd love to see him on a debate stage with Trump and Biden. And he has brought COVID and COVID policy vaccines aside, which I know he's trying to avoid those conversations, back into the national conversation. And it's a really important conversation that we have, the biggest public health crisis we've arguably ever faced in this country. But look, you know, yes, he's he's raised 8 million. Biden, who people are saying is just can't even put a campaign together, is raising 72 million trump at this time when he was the incumbent was raising 120 million a quarter so yes let's pump the brakes is a good characterization of my position well yeah. and it's like it, it can be a distraction because what's the point in one hand uh but on the other side it's fascinating because this is a guy that honestly there are some serious outlets they tried to cancel him uh for various reasons That's right. Uh, but he speaks for a big contingent here in America who feel like uh, nobody should be canceled, that everybody should have the right to at least ask some important questions. Okay, let's talk about this important question that could be seen as controversial as well. A bill to make daylight saving time permanent passed the Senate in 2022. The companion bill never t was taken up by the House. 29 states uh, passed or have pending legislation ending daylight saving time and the changing of the clocks. Mm -hmm. Farmers the almanac, do we throw it all the way out? I mean, this just seems like, for some people it's, it's due time and for other people it's just wrong. There's, there's other high priorities. Who, who feels feel, passionate feel, about this one, guys? I, I like I'll gaining an hour of start. sleep every year. I'll start and say that every time I hear this story, I have a panic attack, like I'm taking an SAT and I've come across a math word problem that I can't quite understand. <laughs> because you're like, oh, this means we're going to get more daylight? No, no, it's actually, and then I think about it. It's it, kind of confusing. And I think it just really appeals to late risers who get more, who, who wake up later than those earlier. Like it doesn't create more. So 
I, I kind of like, let's just keep it the same and just, I don't think it's going to really change anything, but mostly like I think a lot of viewers, mm -hmm. it's just kind of confusing. It doesn't really get, it's not going to change <laughs> anything other than when we wake up, maybe. Yeah. I, I think wait, a lot of people I, are like, I, what I, does I, permanent I, daylight yeah. saving mean? You know? I, I, I have to strongly disagree. Debate. Oh, Steve is strongly disagreeing. Let's okay. listen. I, you know, I, I got to strongly disagree with my, my former boss, Colby Hall, who I oh, love. But oh, I didn't realize I, that. Listen, I... I I find that in college, I feel like one of the ways was good and one of them was bad. I don't, I'm not 100% sure which one, but ever since having kids, they both seem worse. So so <laughs> if anything can anything can be better now. Yeah. If, if we're gonna, if that we're gonna get like rid of it. That sounds like a personal problem. I, <laughs> maybe. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage. Why the decision to run for president? We need to end this corrupt merger of state and corporate power, which is destroying our country. That collaboration is responsible for the forever wars that are bankrupting the middle class, that are causing this inflationary spiral, for the poisoning of our water, of our environment, of our food supply. Um, and it's also just it's causing this extraordinarily systematic shift in wealth upward away from the working poor, away from the middle class to create this new um, aristocracy of uh, billionaires. In 500 days of lockdown, we created 500 new billionaires. And we taught everybody in this country to use Amazon to forsake the local retailers who are now you know, all boarded up. And those are the people who, gave, who pay local taxes, who, you know, who enrich our community, who give uh, jobs to your summer jobs to your kids, who you know, who finance the local Boy Scouts, who right. pay for the Little League and the, you know, the hockey jerseys, and they're all gone. Amazon doesn't pay any local taxes. They pay not a dime in federal taxes yeah. either last year. They're doing it right in front of us. They're, you know, they're, they're ripping out the middle class in this country. If you like this video and you want to learn more about me and the movement that we're building, please go to Kennedy24.com. RFK Jr. may have left the Democratic Party, but he's still having a pretty significant impact on Democratic candidate polls, especially uh, President Joe Biden's poll numbers. As Breaking, Co uh, Breaking Point's co-host Sagar and Jetty posted, quote, it's one thing to ignore Robert Kennedy Jr. in a Democratic primary, but it is a whole other to ignore him when he is shaping up to be the most formidable third party candidate in more than a century. According to a recent New York Times Siena College poll, RFK Jr. is raking in as much as 25 percent support in some key battleground states like Michigan and Georgia. Now, many argue the spoiler candidate should be allowed to participate in presidential debates, uh, especially if he gets ballot access while polling this high. If he spoils the race, so be it. They can try to... Uh, other candidates can talk about the issues that mattered to him in order to compete for those votes as well. But the Lincoln Project, a centrist PAC, decried Fox News' coverage of RFK Jr., Cornell West, and Dean Phillips' campaigns, accusing them of being part of the, quote, Trump coalition, those candidates. Over the proofs in the pudding, a new 2024 poll out of Iowa shows Trump leading 41 percent, Biden at 35 percent, and independent RFK Jr. and Cornell West earning 16 and 4 percent, respectively, for a total of 20 percent of the vote. So RFK Jr.'s current poll numbers um, are very significant, um, and they're reminiscent of a kind of actually Ross Perot sort of three-way race. Um, that, that's, a, that's a significant amount of support. That's you know, above the kind of baseline support that third parties are usually getting somewhere between like one and five percent um, in the polls, and then you know one percent at the end of the day. The Libertarian Party did a little bit, a little bit better than that in um, in uh, 2016, I believe. So substantially better than that, but still you know single digit results. Um, RFK Jr. is slated to have an effect. Yeah. So the Lincoln Project is a group of never Trump Republicans that have allied themselves with the Democratic Party and who right. are frustrated forever and always by third party efforts because they're concerned about a spoiler effect that would put Trump back in office. What's interesting is that polls are sort of mixed about who RFK Jr. has a negative effect on. It, what we saw when he was a Democrat seemed to be that the logic was because he was running in the Democratic Party, 
By default, he was going to be taking uh, votes away from uh, Joe Biden in the primary. Obviously, Donald Trump isn't competing in the Democratic primary. So there seemed to be some advantage to conservative outlets and kind of independents to give him a platform, buoy him, and laud the things about his platform that they also agree with. Now that he's running as an independent, I think you've seen a little bit of a shift, um, and wherein, because he does seem to be— um, pulling a lot of voters who are disaffected from both parties, potentially a threat, you're not seeing him get the same amount of uh, accolades. I do think that his own behavior has played a role in this. Uh, his stance on Israel and his stance on some of the free speech issues relating to Israel haven't helped him very much. Uh, but I also think a, a lot of it is that the media attention, the character of the media attention that he used to get from the right has changed. Yeah, the, the Lincoln Project, I would have even sterner criticism of them. Um, you know, they claim to be people trying to rescue the Republican Party mm -hmm. for Donald Trump, I would say they're basically just operating as Democrats and, in fact, are kind of grifting people into thinking that they're actually Republicans. They're, you know, Joy Reid's favorite Republican. They're on MSNBC a lot. Mm -hmm. um, they got caught. They did—do you remember that stunt? Like, they, they, they were very anti-Glenn Youngkin. You know, they say they're— just focused on the good of the Republican Party and getting rid of Trump, but they, they went hard after Glenn Youngkin. They did that tiki torch stunt. Do you remember that? They oh, tried baby. to make it look like there were racist people supporting Youngkin, but that would like that was their. It was a it was a whole embarrassing thing. Actually, I did think I did a radar on it a long time ago. Mm. If you want to Google that, <laughs> um, but anyway, yes. So of course they're going to disparage anything that threat that they perceive is threatening um, Joe Biden. Now. It's an open question at this point whether RFK Jr.'s independent candidacy is hurting Joe Biden more, Donald Trump more, or whether, I mean, and I, I don't think that matters. Again, I think that's fine for him to eat into support. That's how it works. You do, no one is owed your vote. You don't have to, you shouldn't be thinking, oh, well, I just have to vote for the least bad candidate. No, you should vote for the candidate you like the best. If if other uh, if the other candidates did a better job speaking to the issues that RK Jr. represents, he wouldn't have this um, this large um, faction behind him. But uh, it, it is clear, I think, that uh, there are a lot of conservatives who are interested in him. Um, a lot of independents, a lot of disaffected people, um, people who are dissatisfied with both major parties, and uh, and he has a very you know interesting coalition. He's probably winning votes for people who are not going to vote for either the other well, two anyway. Well, so a Quinnipiac poll that was released a, a week ago showed um, that, and again, in this matchup, Biden is narrowly ahead of Trump by one point. This was a week ago, within the margin of error in a head-to-head -head matchup if Kennedy was not involved. If Kennedy were involved in a three-way race, Biden is ahead with 39 percent to 36 percent. Right. So he increases his uh, margin uh, over Donald Trump. That is, I think, why we've seen this big turn of events. It, that puts the Lincoln Project in a, in a weird situation, because they are arguing against people like RFK Jr., even though by some indication he would actually help them in their goal of defeating Donald Trump. But I think the real takeaway is that nobody really knows, and they would prefer a world where uh, RFK Jr. is not continuing to be ascendant. And not just Robert uh, F. Kennedy Jr., by the way, is in the mix as an independent. Cornel West has now left the Green Party, and it's mm. worth looking a little bit about uh, what's going on with these other candidates. Now, independent candidate Cornel West took a jab at Biden for his low standing in the polls, posting on X, formerly Twitter, quote, POTUS doesn't need me to spoil his reelection bid. His milk toast, neoliberal agenda leading us to war, climate calamity, and more poverty is doing that for him. It's time to break the derelict duopoly into tiny little pieces and engender a new U.S. polity rooted in truth, justice, and love. The main mainstream media also appeared to parrot the White House Karine Jean-Pierre's comments, writing off the Biden's poll numbers. MSNBC contributor Dr. Jason Johnson took to X, writing, quote, the recent New York Times Siena poll, only bad news for Biden if the presidential election were tomorrow, but it's not, so... He's fine. We're seeing a lot of that. And I can't imagine a more <coughs> open Excuse expression me. of indifference to voters' frustration than saying, they'll be over in a year. But that's what the Democratic Party has been doing for years now, is treat every criticism as just a political matter, nothing substantive, nothing that needs to be changed, nothing that needs to be addressed. The Democratic Party says the party doesn't need to change, the candidates don't need to change, the polity needs to change. Mm -hmm. They couldn't possibly know what they want. That's what you say when you can't change, or you won't change, or, you or you're unwilling change. to change. You're unwilling to change. And for what it's worth, you, what you've seen on the Republican side of the aisle is that the um, 
uh, insurgent Tea Party, uh, Freedom Caucus, whatever you want to call them, faction of the party, has had the effect of dragging the party to the right. And what it's interesting to look at how they've affected the um, the House differently than the Senate. You see, because of the existence of that faction in the House, there is a real appetite for voting down Joe Biden's funding efforts for Ukraine and uh, Israel in a way that you do not see among Republican senators. So you have a real-world example of what it would mean for there to be an insurgent left, for there to be a Democratic Party that, for one reason or another, was forced to actually say, hey, this is where the electorate is, let's move to them. But that hasn't been the case, and I think that the reason is because both parties are captured by the same um, financial interests and drive in the same direction, especially on these big issues like war. We'll have more rising right after this. This election season, we've seen a handful of outsiders seeking to challenge President Biden and his likely opponent, former President Donald Trump, as third party or independent candidates. One is Robert F. Kennedy Jr., son of former Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy and a longtime environmental lawyer. A recent national poll shows in a three-way matchup with Biden and Trump, Kennedy has support from 22 percent of registered voters. I sat down with him earlier this week to discuss his campaign, and I asked him why he thinks he's connecting with voters. I think people are ready to, people are tired of the vitriol, they're tired of the polarization. You know, we've made a big effort at trying to uh, talk about issues, about the values that Americans hold in common rather than, the, you know, the culture war issues that drive everybody apart. Um, I, you know, I've been uh, focused on being civil, but I think most important, people really want to hear the truth and they want to hear the truth about a lot of different issues, and they feel, Americans feel that they're being lied to by the media, by, uh, by the government agencies that are supposed to be honest with the American people, and, and they're feeling that the system is rigged against them, that the middle class is disintegrating in this country, and that nobody is hearing them, that they're not, you know, that, uh, that, the, that the government and the system are rigged against them. How do you translate that polling support, which is, to be clear, a year out, right? A lot can happen in the next year. How do you translate that into electoral support, though? I mean, because independent campaigns, especially ones as large as yours, they faced legal challenges in the past, external pressure. You look at Ralph Nader in 2004. What's your path to 270? Are you targeting specific states, for example? Yeah, we're targeting specific states, uh, and, you know, you're right. Which states are you targeting? Well, we're targeting, I mean, all of the traditional battleground states are states that we think we can do really well, and all I need to do... So you're talking and, Wisconsin, well, Pennsylvania... Yeah, and all I need to do in those states, Arizona, Arizona. Michigan, Ohio, um, Georgia... Mm -hmm. All I need to do in those states is get 34% of the vote, and I can walk away with 270 electors. So, you know, because it's a, it, a, the electors are winner take all, and it's assigned by plurality rather than majority. But are you oh, near 34 in any of those states? Oh, I'm at 22 now, a year out. Nobody's ever been that. That is nationally, though, right? Nationally, nobody has ever been. Uh, and, you know, in, 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 uh, that I know of in our history has ever been, except for George Washington, who's the last independent president, has ever been uh, this high in the polls, this far out, and among, particularly among key constituencies, young people and independents. So, you know, I don't know what will happen, and I'm not a good spin person, but I, I feel pretty good about where I am today. I think I'd rather be in my position than I, than I would in President Trump's position or President Biden. Can I ask you another question about your candidacy? Because a, a number of your own family members have spoken out against it. Four of your siblings issued a statement denouncing your candidacy, saying it's dangerous for the country. They wrote in a statement, Bobby might share the same name as our father. He doesn't share the same values, vision, or judgment. Your family are icons of the Democratic Party. They do not typically speak out against their own, but they are in this case. Why? Well, I have 105 family members, living family members. But these are your a siblings. A lot of them are supporting me. But let me ask you this. Yeah. Does your family always agree with everything that you do? They don't always agree with me, but I think they'd vote for me if I ran for president. Well, a lot of them are going to vote for me, but not all of them. 
your siblings, no, though, I argue, who you know, know you better. Listen, my family has a long history with President Biden. There's five members of my family that are working for the administration, and President Biden has a statue, a bust of my father behind him at the Oval Office. We've know, I've known President Biden virtually my entire life. Mm -hmm. so all the people in my family, or many of the people, including all the people that you mentioned there, the four members of my family you mentioned there, have strong, long friendships with President Biden. And I understand that they're you know, disappointed with the fact that I would run against him. But, but they're more you know, than disappointed, sir. They're, they're saying that it's dangerous for the country. Well, you would have to ask them, why don't you have them on this show, and you can ask them why they said that. My understanding is that, you know, and this is, I think, one of the problems is with the Democratic Party right now is that nobody is saying about President Biden that we want him for president because he's going to give us a vigorous leadership, that he has the energy, that he has the cognitive ability, that he has the vision to inspire Americans. Instead, what they're saying is you got to vote for him, despite all of the defects that are clear to everybody, because if you don't vote for him, somebody worse is going to get in there. And that's what they mean by the word dangerous. I think that the Democratic Party has to offer Americans a better, more positive vision for this country than just do what we say or President Trump is going to, you know, endanger our democracy. We, we should be able to do more than that. We should be able to inspire people. And I think that's why so many young people and independents are supporting me, because they're tired of the fear tactics. They're tired of being, of orchestra, being manipulated through orchestrated fear. Well, let me and ask they you, want something to let, inspire them. Let me ask you, if I may, let me ask you about a specific concern your family's expressed in the past, too, which is your controversial views on, on vaccines and being part of the anti-vaccine well, movement what in are particular. What on vaccines? Well, you've said previously that no vaccine is safe or effective, which is... I, I've never you, said that. You did say that. On, in a podcast interview no, in I've July, never said that. you did say that. There are quotes, and that recording is there. You are wrong, and you're making something up. On Fox I, News, you said that you still believe in this idea that vaccines can cause, cause autism, which has long been but now you're, you're changing the subject. What you said wrong. No, sir, I'm before, asking about your views Emma, on vaccines. Emma, what I, well, that's why I, I'm happy to say that my views are that vaccines should be tested like all other medications are tested. They should have placebo controlled trials prior to licensure. It's the only medical product, the only medical product or medical device that is allowed to get a license without engaging in. A safety test. So you do not believe control. the statement that no vaccine is safe and effective. I've you don't never believe said that. that. According to these reports and the recordings oh, you yeah, have in the you podcast know what, that's interview the in July. With, that's the problem that, if you are reading reports about me in the mainstream media, including this network, they're almost all inaccurate. I'm not anti vax. I've never been anti vax. You I've, just spoke before one of the largest anti vaccine groups in the country a few days ago. That's not what they call themselves. That's not what they call themselves, but that's what they advocate well, for. I, you know what? I speak to the, a lot of people, and I don't agree, and I don't pretend to agree with everything that everybody in the audience says. Can I ask you, Barry? I can agree. I, I, you know, I've said from the beginning, listen, I fought against mercury and fish for 40 years. Nobody called me any fish. I, fought, I like the idea that we have seatbelts in cars. Nobody calls me any automobile. I want vaccines that are safe, just like every other medicine, and that are adequately tested. It doesn't mean I'm anti-vaccine. It just means that I'm sensible and have common sense. I think that most Americans, if they understood my views, my real views, rather than the distortions of my views and the mischaracterizations that they hear from the mainstream media, including this network, that they would agree with me. I'll just say there's evidence of these statements on the record. Well, you and show people me, can look show it up me a themselves. statement, not the evidence of a statement. Let me, let me ask show you me a about... statement rather than evidence, what you call evidence of a statement. Let me ask you more broadly about 2024 and where we are right now, a year away from the date people will cast ballots. We know in their respective parties, Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden are still leading by wide margins, regardless of how high you are polling, right? The latest numbers from Quinnipiac show 64 percent of Republican and leaning voters supporting Mr. Trump, 77 percent of Democrats and Dem-leaning voters supporting Mr. Biden. If those numbers do not shift, 
How do you decide if and when you should end your candidacy? Uh, I have no intention of ending my candidacy. I have an intention to win. I'm, I, I'm way ahead of any independent candidate in history right now, and I, and I intend to win the election. Robert F. Kennedy, candidate for president as an independent candidate. We thank you for coming by. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me, Edna. And you can watch more of our interview with Mr. Kennedy on our website, including questions on immigration and abortion. We are determined as the American people to go back and reach that promised land again. And I do know what it looks like because I've had glimpses of it during my lifetime. I know it's an America with a prosperous middle class where if you work hard, if you play by the rules, uh, you can finance a home, uh, you can raise a family, uh, you can take a summer vacation, uh, you can put something aside for your retirement where we don't have to choose between economic prosperity and environmental protection, where our children will have the same opportunities for dignity and enrichment and good health as the communities that our parents gave us. I know it's a place where every American enjoys the right to vote and everybody has absolute faith that our electoral system has integrity and it's the best in the world, which is a bastion for the rights that are enshrined in our Constitution. And I know that that promised land is a place where America is a moral authority around the world, that people look to us for leadership, that it's a place that promotes peace instead of war. And I know that America is possible when we declare independence from the deadlocked party establishment. That is the America as possible when we declare independence from a war machine that devours a trillion dollars a year. That's the American is only possible when we stop fighting each other and go over the fortress wall. And, uh, and that's the America that I'm going to serve when I become President of the United States. If you like this video and you want to learn more about me and the movement that we're building, please go to Kennedy24.com.